So here's uh, how I'm going to take out the cluster on this R107. Uh, you need to remove the steering wheel. If you have a Mercedes uh, original wheel, you can just pull out the whole rubber uh, centre. Um, on this Nardi one, um, I can just remove this ring here and use a small screwdriver on this Nardi to uh, ease out the centre, uh, the horn push, which just comes out like so. Okay. And uh, I can just leave that dangling. Now, the earlier models uh, had a bolt, uh, but this one has a 10 millimeter Allen uh, bolt. So I've got a sharp, um, I've got a sharp Allen bolt here. And I've ground off the end so it's square, um, so that it'll go right down to the bottom of the socket. Uh, and a 10 millimeter socket and a breaker bar. Now, often the uh, bolts are really tight and you don't want to put any strain on the steering so the first thing to do is to put the key in and unlock the wheel so that the uh, the wheel can turn um, and uh, I think that I can take this one off because I've taken it off recently but if the bolt is tight use a length of wood to go from the spoke down to the floor just a length of timber about 18 inches long something like that you can wedge into there and put your breaker bar on the end and I think I'm going to be able to manage this just holding the wheel myself, but we'll see. There, okay. Often much tighter, and you'll need the and you'll need the wood in place. Having taken the bolt almost all the way out, then release the wheel, pull it towards you. It may need a tug, and you don't want it in your face, so don't take the bolt fully out. Once the wheel is loose, then remove the bolt. And if you have a look really carefully down the, if we just take a look inside now, the, the spindle actually has a center punch mark, which on the later models is at six o'clock. I think on the earlier ones, it might be at 12 o'clock when the steering is centered. Um, the most important thing is that you know uh, if the uh, if the wheel is is in the correct place so um, you can put some uh, a little bit of tipex um, on the um, on the spindle and on the boss so that you can line it up again afterwards um, I'm just going to uh, line up the wheel so that I know the wheel is level um, and I'm not going to uh, and I'm not going to fiddle with the steering once once it's off okay so I haven't taken the bolt out and marked uh, marked it up I can just literally pull the wheel off. Okay, so now we can get the cluster out. Um, these are just a compression fit. There's a rubber gasket around the unit, uh, but I know that I've had this one out uh, quite recently, uh, and I should be able to just get this out by hand, just by literally holding the spines and pulling. If necessary, you can put something like a, a blunt dinner knife uh, down, there we are, uh, down the sides just to release the uh, the gasket and we just pull it forward just missing the cruise control okay and then on the back we've got a number of a number of connectors and we need to go through and these remove these uh, connectors okay so starting from this end there's the power to the clock uh, be careful because this is, if you haven't disconnected the battery, which I recommend you do, uh, this one is live. Uh, it's easy to blow the fuse. Uh, it looks like this uh, insulator around it has, uh, has split. If that touches to earth, it will, uh, it will blow the fuse. Um, we've then got this plug, this plug. The speedo signal cable uh, which you turn and pull okay we've then got a plug at the bottom for the for the warning lights and then this large round multi-way plug here this operates most of the other uh, warning lights etc. It just needs 
jiggling a little. There's no lock on the plug, that comes off. And we've then just got the, um, the vacuum pipe for the economy gauge. So just pull that off. And that's the cluster clear. Okay, so here's the cluster out, and I only need to take the speedo out. Um, and you need a, uh, a six millimeter uh, little hex socket. And take these bolts out. This one is longer, but holds in the rear stack for the panel light dimmer. Longer one. And that can be just pulled out like so. Uh, and then we need to just remove the set of warning lights which are in the middle on mine. Earlier models don't have these. Just two crosshead screws there. And this then pulls out. Okay, there's some wires going around it held in with little plastic clips. We can just pull those out and now we can release the, the speedo. Like this. Okay, so to look at the other dials, if you wanted to, it's just a question of und undoing these other bolts and, and taking it all uh, carefully out. Um, if, for example, you're going to uh, repaint the needles, I did mine a little while ago using this paint. Uh, this is Tamiya Orange X6, which is a uh, satin um, acrylic orange colour. And I, I painted my, uh, my, needles, uh, my needles before. Okay, so we need to get uh, the speedo out of this back case. So we've got um, four little cross point screws here. And then this pulls out, leaving uh, the printed circuit board. Uh, there's a motor here which runs the um, the odometer uh, through the gears um, and this is the reset lever um, and that's uh, that's about it uh, this is an earth strap um, now the gears are held in this plastic box on the end now i removed all mine because this is the second time i do it because i had to if you're replacing these gears there are so many different combinations of numbers of teeth that you really have to um, check what you've got first. You can't you can't look it up um, because it depends which model, which year, uh, what final drive you've got. Is it miles or kilometres? What's the maximum speed on your speedometer? There are many many combinations, uh, not least the model. So um, I took mine out and uh, to count the, the teeth. Um, and on the on the teeth, it's um, this um, the, the critical wheels are this one which is in fragments. This is the twelve tooth uh, wheel. I'll just show you the the new one alongside, and you can compare. So that's a 12 tooth wheel. Um, we've then got um, uh, this one, which is uh, pretty standard um, and uh, everyone has the, the same on that. But this is the one which varies. Now this on mine has 19 teeth, but it can have anything from about 12 to, to 24 teeth around there. And that makes a difference as to, uh, as to the gearing, etc. So that's what's important to get right uh, in advance. Now, after I had disassembled mine uh, in order to cor to find out the correct tooth count, um, I actually took all the gears out um, because I didn't want um, uh, to lose any of them. Um, so I I had a, a, a bare uh, 
drive like this. In fact, this, this pin had come out as well um, and ran the car like that for a couple of weeks until the gears arrived. So just putting this pin back in, um, it's easier if you take some pictures when you take it out. But actually the gears you'll find will only go in in the correct way. Um, so we've got, this, uh, we've got this white one here which has uh, coarse teeth on one side and finer teeth on the other side. And that engages with the actual drum. If we slide that in there and turn this wheel, uh, we can see the numbers, uh, the numbers on the odometer uh, spinning around there. Okay. The next one is this uh, black one, which has two similar uh, size cogs, uh, and that goes onto this other spindle, and it engages with the first one. So we can see that's. I mean, you you, you could put these on in the right order, but they wouldn't engage with each other. So it, it's not difficult to work out where they all go. Now these are the two. Uh, oh, the three which had, had broken on mine. This one had gone um, very soft. Uh, this one had a tooth which fell off it and in fact you can pull teeth off yourself it's so uh, so soft and then the little 12 uh, drive wheel had completely disintegrated so these are replaced with with the ones I've got here so this is the equivalent of the black one this is the equivalent of the uh, of the white one and then that's the that's the 12 cog so just putting these um, on now We'll put the uh, this one on, and we can see that this uh, cog will engage with that one there. Okay, so that's turning well. And then onto this final spindle, uh, the one which uh, has 12 teeth uh, around the middle, which it engages with here. That goes on there. And then we're just left with the, the drive one from the motor, which goes on here. Um, now the instructions do very helpfully say um, for the 12 tooth gear you have to lock the steel shaft with a plier and press the 12 tooth gear down. Do not put it all the way down, leave half a millimetre for rotation. Um, you have to, uh, it says you have to use pliers to collapse the internal brass collar. So this last um, one which disintegrated here uh, this has got a little brass collar which stayed on, so I need to just go and get some. Um, just need to go and get some pliers now to be able to uh, pull that off. Oh, so so getting this old brass, the centre of the old brass, uh, brass centre of the old broken wheel off is quite tricky. I've got some pliers in there to hold the shaft, uh, and I've, as per the instructions, I've collapsed the internal brass collar just using pliers, uh, and I'm hoping that we can now. Uh, pull this off the shaft there we are that's great okay so that's come off and we can now put all the gears in right okay so we need this one and this one no not that one <laughs> this one you know it's not right if it doesn't engage that's it just keep turning it uh, and then finally this one. Okay, right. So we now need to press this home. It says leave half a millimeter to allow rotation. So okay, that's it. Right. So that's in the middle of that wheel now, and that rotates nicely. You can you can feel the the resistance of the motor and if I turn that then we can see that the uh, the odometer is turning round. Right, okay, time to put it all back together. No lubricant as per instructions. But the holes in the casing just line up with the end of those axles. So just putting these two screws in. Okay, final check, nothing's rubbing, everything looks good there. Right, put it back in its case. Make sure these 
spaces uh, are all still in place. Four screws in the back. That's that done. Okay. Make sure no dust in it. Needle's not bent. And we can put this back. Good opportunity to blow out any dust that's in the uh, in the casing. This watch at this earth strap at the top that we saw um, goes underneath the the bolts and makes makes contact with this uh, part of the uh, the printed circuit board here. There's a good connection there. Um, these suffer from earthing problems, um, and it's, uh, it's but it's easy to just run a wire from one of these um, one of these uh, screws here. Um, you can just uh, put a, a a wire under there and put it to earth, and that solves most of those problems. Okay, let's get this back in. We set those down to Okay, let's go out to take it to the bottom front and then the box will go in there. Right, just need to put the the uh, the warning lights in. If yours has them, they don't all. Make sure it's the right way up. Two screws in there. While I'm here, I can just explain about uh, LED bulbs. Um, the the tick from the indicator is notoriously quiet on these, so you never know you've got it on. Um, but one thing you can do is put um, LED bulbs into uh, into this uh, into this unit, and they're, they're they're a bit brighter, but oddly the left and right are different. So the right indicator here is one of these, and it needs an LED like this uh, that goes in there, and the left one is different, different type of uh, bulb, same uh, power and everything. So this is the LED one, which would just go in there. And, uh, and then turn, and it makes a connection with the, with the board. If the um, if you put these in, and they don't work. Take them out, turn them 180 degrees, and put them back in again because these are polarity sensitive, which an ordinary bulb uh, wouldn't be. Okay, so here we are going to put this dash back in. Just before we do that, uh, take the opportunity to just clean up the contact. Um, uh, wheels um, on the on the steering wheel and the two copper um, sprung uh, contacts uh, which are on the uh, on the uh, on the steering column there okay so we can now reconnect the speedo so we've got uh, what I'm going to do first is uh, this 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 reconnect this large uh, connector first of all and and I've just put on the hazard lights and I can see that both indicators are working uh, so I know that that bulb was correctly uh, orientated the one which I've just taken out okay but I do recommend you disconnect the battery don't follow my advice <laughs> right okay It's easy to, to lose track of how many different bulbs and sockets and everything there are here. So uh, just go through and methodically make sure that every plug is back in place, which they now, they now are. So everything is now back in place. Okay, so the cluster's now all uh, all reconnected. 
uh, everything's in, screws are tight, all the connections in. Be careful, some of these little bulbs uh, are quite fragile in their holders, so don't knock it when you uh, when you put it on. So just lift it in, gently get it over the cruise, and slide it in. That's it. And it's just a friction friction fit. Um, just to check that all the lights work before we on to those are all working ABS indicators high beam will struggle to see in this sunlight I think it's on I think it's on and, uh, and the economy gauge works rev counter works you need to reset the clock time obviously and uh, we'll soon be ready to do a run okay Right, steering wheel back on. So remembering that I just made this level, but you would have made marks as I recommended. Okay. And line those up. And then we've got our big bolt. And using a piece of wood uh, again against the floor uh, for you to tighten against. Steering lock off. That's that done. Horn in. Star the right way up. it works okay. yep ring on right that's it 